Hello people of the web and YouTube, did we get here and today I'm going to be teaching you how to upload a GIF into Second Life. Now before I continue on with the video however, I want to say this, we will be doing what I said in the previous video which is animating Wily E. Coyote's eyes. Just like I did here with Yugi, we're going to do the same thing with Wily E. Coyote. And in the previous video I did some steps really wrong which we will have to rectify in order to animate his eyes. But before we go out of our way to animate the eyes, I think it's best I explain how all this necessarily works. Now as you guys can see this is a GIF image. You may be wondering how I did this considering Second Life doesn't let you upload GIF files. Well, we're essentially tricking Second Life. We're using a bit of LSL code to span through a single image file to simulate movement and to make it act kind of like a GIF. If I were to open this up here right now, go under content, you guys can see there's a single image file in here. If I double click it and open it up, it's just a single image file that's 124 by 124 pixels with all the frames in our GIF. Now this is important because when the Second Life uploads a picture, it's always going to be in 124 by 124 pixels. There's a file um, resolution limit. So there is a limit when it comes to uploading GIFs into Second Life. Now to show you guys real quick what I mean, I got a GIF on a shirt over here and this is where I was testing the limits of the program. As you guys can see, the bigger the GIF is, the longer it is I should say, the more blurrier your images will get. So if I go into this prim or this shirt, click on the image file, you guys can see there's a lot of frames here and a lot of dead space and in order to make it all fit, it zooms the picture in really really tiny which blurs the resolution out to match the 124 by 124 pixel size that Second Life lets you put into the game. So yeah, when you're picking an image file to upload into Second Life, or I should say a GIF file, I recommend a really short 2-3 to three second GIF. Try not to go any higher or higher than that I should say unless the resolution is really really low on it like this GIF. The lower the resolution is and the shorter the clip the better it will turn out. Anyway, to actually get this all working, you need to have a tool to convert a GIF into a single image file and thankfully there is a tool that exists called um, G2SLA, also known as the GIF2SL Animation version 0.6. Um, I will provide you guys with the download link to this program, so don't worry. It's down in the, in the description for those that want it, as well as the LSL code that goes inside of the prim later in Second Life. So before I close this out, I'm going to copy this so that I have it ready when we put this image into Second Life. And speaking of the image, we're going to convert this GIF now. As you guys can see, I've already done that, but I'm going to do it again just for the heck of it. So I'm just going to load the GIF in, which I already did, and then I'm going to hit Output. But if you're animating, let's say, an image or a UV map of a shirt, for an example, and it has transparency in it, you will want to enable the transparency option if you're animating the UVs of a shirt for, you know, to make it move. So you want to have that enabled if there's any kind of transparency, but since there's no transparency in this image, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to hit output and that will spit our image out. Now, depending on the length of the image, it may take a long time, but if the image is really short like this, only at 38 frames by like have the resolution that it should spit out. I can't remember the resolution of this GIF. It spit it out really quick is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to hit OK on that and I'm going to look at the image. This is the image. When you make the conversion, the image gets spit out right next to the GIF 2SL animation app. So I'm going to open the image, take a good look at it, see if it's the way I want it, and it looks like it's pretty good. It's a little blurry, but it ain't too bad with all things considered. Anyway, now we just got to go back into Second Life and upload that image. As you guys can see, I've already done that, but I'm going to do it again just, just for the heck of it. So upload image, select the image we just made, upload. Now that we got our image, we can just make any kind of object or select a pre-made object. I'm just going to make a new one. Just click and we're going to scale this object up so we can see the animation a bit better. 
That should be good, and we're gonna want to go under the content tab after we make our object. Now when we're in here, all you gotta do is drag and drop your image into the content window, then you gotta hit new script, open that script file up and paste that code, which I will be leaving a link to down below in the description. Just paste that in, hit save, and pretty much immediately our GIF will start playing. Now for those of you wondering, this script does not only play just one GIF. If you have more than one animation, um, give me a second to find one. Okay, this will do for now. If you have more than one animation, you can just uh, click on the object to switch through them. Now, this is a little bit iffy right now because I'm running OpenSim and OpenSim really does not like this script. But yeah, as you can see, the texture changes and the animation changes. If you're wearing this as a shirt, you might not be able to click on it, but you should be able to right click and touch it to do, to do the same thing. Anyway, that's the basic principle for how this all works and how we're going to be animating the eyes on our Wiley E. Coyote model. But like I said in the previous video, I missed a step towards the end. Some avatar models need to be unlinked before they're thrown into Second Life, so we're gonna quickly go over how you would do that just by opening up our old file of Wiley E. Coyote. He's pre-rigged by the way, so we're not gonna be doing any rigging in this video. However, we are gonna be separating the mesh out back into parts again. So to do that, you just got to click on your mesh. Let me make sure the UV maps are still good. They are. And oh, when you join mesh together, sometimes the UV maps break. And to fix them, all you gotta do is go over here after selecting the object, click the triangle, and look under UV maps. You can click the camera, and you can swap between your UV map images till you get the right textures on your model. And then you could delete the rest if there's any extras there. But yeah, let's get back into solid view right now. Click on our model, go down to object mode, click edit mode. Now in here, I want to just select a vertice. I'm just gonna pick one on the one on the eye, click A, that will select all the vertices, and now hit P. This will tell us to separate by selection, material, or lose parts. Now if your materials are textured and colored, you can separate by material, which should work fine for this model. And yeah, it did. As you can see, now there are two separate objects again. If I go back to object mode, we can click on his body, and we can click on the, his eyes, and they're now separate. So now that we got our object separated, all you gotta do is select all your mesh. I can do this just by hitting select, all by type, select mesh. And basically from here, the steps are the same as in the previous video. All you gotta do is go up to export, Calidia Avastar, apply armature scale, and export your model. As you can see, I've already done that, so I'm not gonna do it again. But yeah, now these parts are separated, meaning when we put this thing back into Second Life, when we put that LSL code in, it's only gonna go in his eyes and not the whole body. If we didn't separate the item like this, when you put the LSL code in, his, old, his whole body would be replaced with, well, the eye blinking animation, which is something we don't want. So yeah, now that we got this thing exported, it's in two parts, it's still rigged, we can now go and edit our textures in Photoshop. So yeah, guys, as you can see, here's our Wily E. Coyote's eyes. Like I said before, this uh, particular avatar model came with two textures, a body texture and an eye texture. So we're just going to be messing with the eye texture, and we already know how this kind of works. Um, the base Wily E. Coyote model, if we go back into Second Life, I should have the old one spawned. His eyes do not animate, but they do tell us something if we go and look at them. They're stuck on one position, so back in Photoshop, we essentially want to change this frame out here with any one of these other frames, and that's what I did. I just copied and pasted one of these eyeballs up to here, and we animated it in the timeline. So as you guys can see right there in that little window, Forgive the resolution for being cut, uh, Photoshop does that, and I don't know why when you're scrubbing through the timeline like this. But yeah, as you can see, his eyeball 
is indeed animated now. It will go from straight stare, looking straight up, to getting really angry, and that's what we want. So once we make a GIF out of that texture, or while we make an animated thing out of that texture, we got to export it as a GIF. Now in Photoshop, you can easily do that by going up to File, Export, Save for Web. But in other applications, I think you can do GIFs in GIMP now. The process is a little bit different, but you essentially want to animate your texture and then save a GIF. So before I save this, let's test it to make sure it still works. And it does. It's a little bit fast, but we can fix that later on, so don't worry about it. So yeah, we're just going to export this, but I've already done that, so I'm just going to hit done. And we're going to hop back into, well, Second Life. Or I should say Firestorm. This is OpenSim after all, which is why I don't have to pay anything to upload. But yeah, we want to now import our Wiley E. Coyote model, the one that's separate into two parts. So yeah, this should be it right here. Um, I've made a video in the past and it didn't turn out, but I still got the model, so I'm just going to use that model. But it's the same thing that we just did today, where I separated the body and the eyes, so I'm just going to click and open that up. Close this window, and as you guys can see, there's our model. And you want to basically import it like we did in the previous video when we imported this avatar. You want to be sure to include skin weight, include joint positions, and if you want to preview it, you can hit the weights option in the preview menu here. And yeah, this appears to be the right model, so I'm going to hit calculate weight and fee, but let me name it first. Okay, that should do. Now we're going to hit calculate weight and fee, upload, and now that he is in there, I'm just going to drag and drop him out to the ground, and of course he had to go into the ground like that. And now we can start putting in our textures. Um, I'm just going to quickly go grab the texture for his body, and I'll meet up with you guys when we're putting the texture in for the eyes. Okay guys, an important thing before you continue on putting the eyes on this, I need to specify this. You want to go into Edit Linked, click that button, and you could just click on the eyes or you can use the little arrows here to navigate around if your model is a bit too complex and it's a little too hard to click on his eyes without clicking on something else. But either way you do it, you want to click on his eyes, then go under Content, and you want to put that script in here. The same one that we put in for the GIF box. Just copy paste it in there. And you're going to get an error because I didn't put the picture in first. You always want to put the picture in first. And to put the picture in, all you got to do is upload the animated eyes picture. As you guys can see, I've already done that. You want to drag and drop it into the box. And now it's eyes that should animate. But before I continue, I want to say this. If your animation is playing too fast, you can change the end name here. You can up the frame rate. So at, right now it's at one frame a second, which seems pretty good for his eyes. But if I wanted the frames to go even faster, I can put it up to 10 frames a second. And that animation would play a lot faster, as you guys can see. I'm going to back it down to one frame a second because that seemed good and reasonable to me. But yeah, if you also, if you don't like this, you can even put a static eye texture in there. So when you click on his eyes, you can switch between animated and non-animated eyes. I'm just going to leave them animated for now. But before I leave this video, since we did finish what we set out to do today, I'm actually going to wear him real quick just to show you guys that he works still and his eyes do animate. So yeah, as you can see, his eyes are animated, they are working, and if I walk around, he is fully rigged, and everything is doing as it is intended and as it should work. And that's pretty much it for this video, but I'm going to leave you guys out here with a word of caution. When you get your GIF Im images converted, you do not want to rename them. You can rename the beginning portion here, for example, like to whatever you want. Um, tutorial, I'm just going to call it. You can rename the beginning part of that image, but you don't want to rename the animation 4, 8, and whatever other number. You want to keep this info the same. The only other number you should want to change in this 
is the last number, which is the frame rate. So if I wanted this playing at one frame a second, instead of the 10 frames, I can just do that. And now we're playing at one frame a second, and that looks silly, so I'm going to put it back up to full speed just by putting a 10 in there. But yeah, that's the one thing you don't want to do. You do not want to rename this file. If I were to rename this as whatever, this will not work now. But yeah, guys, that's it for this video. Um, I'm going to leave it off here. I hope it was informative, and I hope I was able to help you out. But yeah, like I said, if you guys need any of the files, they're down in the description. So just download them, and if any of the links go out, let me know, and I will be able to provide you with new links. But yeah, for now, I'm going to leave this video off here. DTPK, signing off. Peace. Then hit the rest position button. And when you reset the pose, it will go right back to a TP. And then you hit export, we save experimental. It will give you a...